Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, we want to welcome you to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, Danielle Arsenault. Danielle is a raw food chef, educator and plant-based nutrition expert. She educates the world about the healing power of plant-based whole foods and healthy lifestyle rooted in compassion for the planet. Before starting with Danielle, we want to remind you that Mindalia TV is a nonprofit organization. Our only mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world and that you can help us. How? By subscribing to our channel, leaving us a posi positive comment down below, liking this video, or sharing it with someone that you know that can benefit from the contents that we're going to be sharing today. Also, we want to remind you we are live streaming right now. So you have the active chat. It's a great tool for interaction. If you have questions that you want to ask, just please remember the format, the word question in caps, and the actual question that you have. At the end of the conference, Danielle will be answering. And also before starting with Danielle, great news. Mindalia TV is broadcasting weekly, daily, in three different platforms, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So if you know the languages, please feel free to visit our platforms. If you have something interesting that you want to share also, you can go to the link above the side of the screen and just click where it says collaborate. You will find there a form that you can fill out. Our technical team will contact you and you could be just like Danielle sharing valuable information with the world through Mindalia TV. Without further delay, we're going to be starting. Danielle, welcome. How are you today? Hi, I'm so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Thank you so much. And let's start by asking you, who is Danielle Arsenault? What do you do? Tell us about your passion. Wow, that's such a huge question. And I mean, you know, at the point in my life where I'm at now, saying who I am you know, to answer that question in a response of like what I do, you know, I'm so much more, we are so much more than what we do. But uh, as far as what I'm doing, you know, in my day to day life, um, I'm a person who really believes in the power of nature, the power of our planet and Mother Earth. And so uh, I educate people with food and I share how delicious whole plant based foods can really heal the body, ignite the spirit, get you excited, get you in the kitchen to prepare good foods that are going to make you feel amazing. So I think that's the ultimate goal is every day trying to reach our most amazing self and our most healthy self. And my mode to sort of help people get there is through food. Um, as we know, there are so many more ways, uh, meditation and things, but um, I'm a traveler. I'm an author. I have five cookbooks. I live simply, humbly in small spaces. And I am just really curious about the world and experiencing as much as I possibly can in, in the life that I have. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And let me ask you something. We're going to be talking today about healing your gut naturally. I understand that you have a lot of tips that you can share with us that it can allow us or that can teach us what should we be eating if we have some sort of discomfort or is it a way of probably detox or is it a lifestyle that we can have in order to prevent feeling sick later? Yeah, good question. I mean, all those things matter in the whole scheme of it. So it said that we have three brains, the actual brain, the heart and the gut. And it's those three brains that sort of navigate and, and push us to navigate this world. And it, that, those three things are what allow us to make our decisions. It what uh, fuels our emotions from day to day. So, you know, listening to our gut is something that uh, has been lost, I think. A lot of people, we forget that our digestive system can really make or break how we feel and the health that we enjoy from day to day. So I have so many things to say about digestion and healing the gut. You know, as we know, our digestive system or our digestive tract starts here in our mouths, goes all the way through the body. 
till the end and it's one tube. So basically what we eat regulates uh, our entire digestive system. And I'm sure that you've heard the phrase, you know, you are what you eat. Well, that's not actually true. It's what you are, what you digest. Uh, the efficiency and efficacy of our digestive system really will either allow us to absorb the nutrients that we're eating or not. And so, you know, some people might say, oh, I eat really healthy, you know, I'm eating lots of plants, but my gut, it's just not quite right. Well, a lot of times it's not necessarily about the food, but it's how is your gut functioning and is it functioning optimally? So the idea is that we get it functioning optimally and then those symptoms of discomfort, indigestion, um, you know, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome as it's been called, those symptoms can reduce greatly and you'll actually find a much more balance in the way that you eat and the way that your digestive system feels from day to day. So, I mean, there's lots and lots of things that we could talk about. Um, let's start with um, one thing, eating, okay? A lot of people eat on the go when they're stressed, when they're, you know, in go mode. Um, and what happens is actually when you're in go mode, when you're maybe a little bit more stressed, when you are in your fight or flight nervous system, that is the sympathetic nervous system. And that nervous system controls basically our fight or flight reaction, um, our animal instinct. So as an example, if we were having to run away from a saber tooth tiger, all the blood would flow to our extremities, our hands, our legs, in order for us to run and get out or fight if that's what the confrontation came to. Um, we've lost a bit of this. I mean, we don't need to run from saber-toothed tigers anymore, but in the body, uh, it's still reflected in uh, the way that the body reacts uh, to stress or a stressor. Now, the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system is the parasympathetic nervous system. That is our rest and digest nervous system. So if you take these two things and you think about it, when you are rested and calm, all of your blood goes to the digestive system to help your body digest food. If you're running around and you're stressed and you don't sleep well and you're, um, you know, you're, you got all kinds of stress, it could be physical stress, it could be mental stress, it could be emotional stress, whatever that would be, that's not the time to eat because the blood isn't there, the energy's not there, it's in your extremities. So one great tip uh, for proper digestion and sort of getting the digestive system started is to relax. And it's so simple when we talk about it, but it's very hard for people to do these days, myself included. Um, so resting, sitting down, taking that time, and even just taking three deep breaths before you eat can kickstart your digestive system better than, than anything can, really. And it also gives you time to appreciate what you're eating. Right? When you take that moment and take those moments to appreciate what you're eating, um, yes. you know, where you're from, who brought it to you, and it, you're starting your digestion. It makes complete sense. But let me ask you something. When people that are on the run, as you said, on the go, we spend the whole day outside, we get hungry. What would be a good idea to eat if we don't have time to, you know, sit, relax, and take a deep breath? What would be a good thing for us to eat at that moment that it's going to have us, you know, the nutrition we need really quick until we have that chance to sit and relax? Maybe yeah. a shake, a fruit, what would be a good thing that can help us? Yeah, that's a really good question because that's, that's uh, you know, we do that. We need, the, we need that. We need to know, okay, what can I eat right now in this moment? Um, what I think the best thing for digestion would be uh, sort of mono meals, meaning if you're snacking, just snack on one thing, like a big grape bag of grapes or like three bananas. Um, when we eat one thing, uh, so I'll say a few things because actually my main view on food is to get a variety. The bigger the variety, the more nutrition you're getting. So that's the stand that I make. But when we're talking about being quick and if we're talking about digestion, um, when we eat one thing, it's so easy for the body to recognize. Um, it's in its most simple form that it can be. Um, so for example, like some almonds or some dates 
or an apple or a banana, but not all those things at the same time. Um, now, the reason that is, um, is because of the different times that the different foods stay in the stomach and through the digestive system, they require different uh, digestive enzymes in order to be broken down. So that comes to another thing. So I'll talk about that in a minute, which is called food combining. But until then, um, I highly recommend something simple. So um, it could be some oatmeal, you know, maybe even like quick oats, like oats with even just water. It sounds kind of boring, but if we're talking about health and we're talking about digestion and we're talking about being quick, the simpler is the better. So you don't want to reach for like a big hamburger because speaking of food combining, which we'll talk about, those things just don't, are not compatible in the stomach. So it's going to take a lot more energy and effort to break that down for your body to use it as energy. And we are definitely doing exactly that. We're running, we're in the streets, and what we're going to go grab is probably a sandwich or a hot dog. And that is exactly what we're not supposed to be doing. Tell me something, it's a doubt that I have always had. Is the way we're eating in these days related to the high uh, amounts of probably anxiety, depression? Is that also represented? Because I have heard the nervous, the digestive tract also, you know, interferes with our emotions. Is that something that you think it's a thing? Absolutely. I mean, if you think logically about what's happening to our food system, you think about what the food that we're putting into our body. Well, first of all, we're completely divorced from our food. We don't see the growing. We don't see where the food comes from. We just see it on our plate or we see it in the supermarket. We don't see that process. And so because of that, we're a little bit um, disconnected from our food source. And because of that, we don't really care as much as we probably should. So um, saying that, you know, there's a lot less effort uh, put into our food choices these days. And there's a lot of money to be made with, you know, fancy packaging, um, fancy foods that people can make, these kinds of things. I mean, we're paying a lot of money for packaging, that's for sure. Um, you can't make a lot of money on broccoli and beans. So that's sort of part of, you know, the system that we've, that's been set up around us. Um, and the system that's feeding us is not necessarily feeding us the food that's going to make us thrive. Um, so it's partially, yes, it's the system. And yeah, I do believe that the food that we eat significantly affects our, our emotional balance. Um, I mean, it's impossible not to, right? The nutrients that you take in. So if we just break it down to the minutest level, you know, that calcium, magnesium, X, you know, vitamin mineral that you take in, that regulates how your body works. It regulates how fast or slow your neurons react. It regulates your metabolism, how fa or how fast or slow you burn energy, how much energy you end up having. I mean, you tell me, like, when you have lots of energy, do you feel good or do you feel bad? When you're super tired and have no energy and lethargic, is that a good feeling or a bad feeling? You know, and it is directly related to the food that we're eating, absolutely. Um, I also think it's way more simple than people think, right? Eating healthy is actually the simple way to eat because it's not confusing. It takes it right back to let's just eat what grows from the ground, what comes from the earth, right? And that is intuitive as a human being. That is intuitive for every single animal on the planet. So really, I do believe that the simpler you can eat, um, and when I say simple, I mean less processed, you might make a gourmet, complicated, raw plant-based dish or even a plant-based dish or a vegan dish. And it could be complicated. You can know, you could have diff many different flavors. You could have different parts to it. But essentially, those the, where the ingredients come from were the whole foods in their most simple form. And I think that's uh, how we're supposed to eat. We're not supposed to eat soggy cardboard. You know, we're not supposed to eat chemicals. That's not what we're supposed to eat. So I do believe that our mood and everything that's affecting us these days has a lot to do with what we put in our body. There's other things, of course, but uh, when you feed your body with the nutrients it needs, uh, you can think quicker, you feel better, you're able to deal with stress, you're able to deal with things that come at you that, you know, if you weren't eating so well, you might have a meltdown. So yeah, I do. I do believe that. 
Hmm. Interesting. I, I also find interesting what you say about the fact that there is this big myth about, you know, eating healthy, it's more expensive, for example, or that is more complicated, especially for people nowadays that we have a schedule, we have everything so tight. So you can tell us or you can provide us with a couple of options for food combining that can keep us running and healthy. Can we talk yeah. about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the idea of food combining, I always like to use the analogy of a highway. So if you have, if you're on the highway and there's many cars and there's a whole bunch of slow cars in the front, what happens? Traffic jam, right? All the cars that are behind that are trying to get through that are going really fast. They're getting upset. They're getting impatient. They're honking their horn. They're making a lot of noise, um, making a lot of pollution behind those slow cars. If you think about your digestive tract that same way, it, it acts like that. When you have something heavy, like a protein, for example, one of the heaviest things for our body to digest, and that could be animal protein, could be plant protein, like a bean, bean or a legume, soybean, for example. Uh, when you have that food and the complexity of that food, the body takes a long time to break it down. And it has to give so many different digestive enzymes in order to break it down, pepsidase, um, pepsin from your stomach. So um, let's just go back to the beginning of digestion. The digestion starts in your mouth, right? As soon as we put food in our mouth, the amylase, the, you know, we all know when our mouth starts to water, that's, that salivary amylase that comes out, that is actually a digestive enzyme that starts to break down your carbohydrates. So as soon as you put food into your mouth, your carbohydrates, they're starting to be broken down by your digest, by your saliva. So what I recommend people is even if you're drinking a smoothie or soup, you swish your saliva around and then you swallow because you're starting your digestion. Um, and so any other food too, you want to chew that food. One of the biggest causes of discomfort and indigestion is not chewing well enough. And then you've got these big particles of food in the body and the body is like, what is that? It doesn't recognize it. So it sends like workers and helpers to break that down even more and that's going to cause discomfort in the body. So imagine we're, we're on this highway, this digestive tract, and we've got the slow guys in front, okay? So say we had our edamame beans at the beginning of our meal, or maybe we had a large steak first or something like that. We eat that, it's going to take a while. It's going to sit in the stomach for a while. I'm going to give you other extreme. Then you eat some watermelon. Well, watermelon, first of all, high sugar content, high water content. What's going to happen right away is it's going to start breaking down right away. It wants to be digested super fast. And guess what? It has to wait. So it waits in the stomach. And while it's waiting, it's getting all this, like all these digestive enzymes trying to break it down, thinking it's protein. And it starts to ferment in the gut and it's going to cause indigestion. There's nowhere for the gases that are caused by the fermentation. There's nowhere for it to go. So you'll get bloating. You will probably get gas. You might get burping, but usually by that time, it's like so far down that the air won't come back up. So you just get discomfort. Um, so the rules of food combining are quite easy. Um, you can eat proteins with non-starchy vegetables, such as uh, broccoli, any like leafy greens or radish, something like that. You can eat proteins with starchy vegetables, such as carrots, beans, peas, um, you know, squash. Uh, and then... So that's separate, okay? Proteins and vegetables, those go great together. Grains, whole grains go well with starchy vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, but grains and proteins do not go together. And the reason that is, is they have a lot of, they have different, um, you need different enzymes to break down those foods. And so they get, it's like the car jam again. They're getting confused in the stomach. And so it's causing indigestion. Everybody knows beans and rice. How do you feel? Okay. Now, how did the Mexicans, how did the Indians from India get away with the, the indigestion of combining? They added digestive spices. So that's why you can go to India and have a kitchari or have your beans and rice in Mexico. Because in Mexico, they add cinnamon and cumin to the beans and rice to make, because cinnamon and cumin are digestive herbs, spices. Uh, in India, turmeric, ginger, coriander, cardamom. Those are all 
digest of herbs and spices. So they know somehow intuitively or just by feeling their guts and, and listening to their guts that, ooh, these foods, they're kind of weird. They don't really go together. They kind of make me feel funny. Well, we're going to add a whole bunch of spices. And as we know, you know, the Indian food is extremely spicy. Well, those spices aren't just there for fun and flavor. They're there for digestion as well. So, um, so that's going to help the traffic jam eating digestive spices. So I'll just give a quick um, list of those. Some really great ones that you'll want are cumin, coriander, um, cardamom, cayenne, cayenne pepper helps boost the metabolism. Um, cinnamon, we could use ginger, which has been used in traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, even Western medicine for centuries to help uh, treat digestive discomfort. Uh, lemon, lemon will kickstart the digestive process as well and uh, can help break down fats and then as well as turmeric and black pepper so turmeric is an amazing spice it's getting a lot of attention these days and I recommend that you do turmeric and black pepper together because when they're together um, their compounds the curcumin in the turmeric becomes more anti-inflammatory and it's better absorbed by the body the black pepper it's uh, called I can't remember the name of the chemical constituent within it um, pimenta or pimentin, something like that. Anyways, when it's combined with the turmeric, uh, it helps your body absorb the curcumin more, which actually makes it more anti-inflammatory. So little tips like that can really help the digestion. Even if you add some of those spices into whatever, you can sprinkle some cinnamon on some apples and bananas, and that will help with the digestive process. Some other, um, Food combining rules would be, uh, you know, if you're eating nuts and seeds, to try to eat like one kind at a time. So you don't really, the whole idea of mixed nuts, that's not the best idea because you're literally putting different kinds of fat in your body and telling your body to figure out which one to digest first. So if you're going to eat nuts, try just choosing one. So maybe you'll have almonds, you know, and then you mix them with some veggies or something like that. Um, one amazing, another, so I talked about chewing. Um, you know, as, as you, as you know, and as I'm teaching and sharing my knowledge with some of your viewers as well, um, I'm a plant-based chef, so I don't particularly myself eat animal products, haven't for 12 years, just got my blood work back by the way. And it was stellar. The doctor was like, this is the best blood work I've ever seen. So that's always good news. Um, yeah, fiber, animal products have no fiber. Fiber is required to keep the digestive system moving, to keep it flowing like it should. Uh, without, without fiber, and with the absence of fiber, um, it's very, very difficult for the body to continually push the food through the body. We need that fiber, the bulking agent, to move through the body. So the more fruits and vegetables you can add into your diet, the better. Um, I recommend 50% fruits and vegetables. And out of that 50%, 50% raw. So 25% of your diet should be raw fruits and vegetables, which is not actually that hard. You know, everybody eats apples. Everybody eats a salad. Um, but fiber is key to keeping that digestive system moving no matter what else you eat. Um, what else? Oh, ice cold drinks. Bad for the digestion. If you think about the stomach like a muscle, when it, okay, if you put ice on a muscle, is it like ready to run and limber? No, it's frozen solid. It can't move. So it's like uh, your stomach. If you drink icy cold water and then start to eat a bunch of food, your stomach literally, mu your muscle is like halted. So it's not going to work properly. So drinking icy drinks or like a Slurpee or a very cold smoothie before you're eating is, uh, is quite hard on the digestive system. So it's better to eat like or drink lukewarm water or even tea, warmer waters, uh, but you also don't want to drink too much water because too much water will dilute digestive enzymes. Um, and then it'll, again, make it a little bit more difficult for the body to digest. Um, regular eating patterns, right? So trying to re eat at the same time each day, that will also have a regulating effect on your body. So if you eat the same time each day, you'll go to the bathroom at the same time each day. And regular in means regular out, and that's really good for the body. Um, so some signs of problems could be things like acid reflux. Uh, acid reflux is not a sign of too much stomach acid. It's a sign of too little stomach acid. Uh, how can you fix that? Uh, you can do things like apple cider vinegar shot in the morning. As long as it has the mother and it's raw or unpasteurized, um, that can help spark um, the production of hydrochloric acid. Uh, sauerkraut 
which has so many probiotics. That's an amazing thing to eat to help your digestive system. I mean, I could keep, I could literally talk for hours. <laughs> Just like, blah, blah, blah. okay. Um, the, yes, the digestive system and the probiotics. So sauerkraut with the probiotics, including things like miso, which also have probiotics. You do have to watch your salt content, so you don't want to eat too, too much. But the probiotics are the living bacteria that exist when the food is broken down its to its simpler parts. So sauerkraut is cabbage and salt that with, the, with time and microorganisms, bacteria, yeast, molds, it breaks down that cabbage into its smaller parts. So instead of being a carbohydrate, it's now a uh, simple sugar. Instead of being a protein, it's now an amino acid. So that's what the body does. So we call these foods pre-digested foods because they basically are broken down into their simpler parts before you eat them. So it makes it way easier for your body to digest them because they don't have to break it down because they're already even broken down. So that's what happens when we ferment foods. And uh, I mean, I could give a whole talk on fermentation, um, but yeah, fermentation is amazing and eating fermented foods will really help the gut. Let me ask you something, Danielle, if I may. You yes, just please. said about uh, lemon being a good kickstart for the digestion. How would you include it? Just, you know, probably a tiny cup of it or adding it to the food. How would you include a lemon in your food if you wanted to use it as a kickstart? I know, that's a great, that's a great idea because there's actually many ways that lemon can benefit you. So first of all, we know lemon are full of vitamin C. Vitamin C helps keep the immune system in check. It helps, it helps keep the immune system strong. Um, uh, lemons are extremely alkaline. Uh, they leave an alkaline residue after we've, we've uh, consumed it. So a really great way to include lemon in your diet uh, would be a, a squeeze of lemon in a warm glass of water in the morning. The only thing I'd recommend is if you do this as a daily practice, you have to watch your teeth because the lemon will still eat away at the enamel in your teeth. So to get away from this completely, use a straw. You bypass the teeth completely, you get the lemon and the warm water. And again, we're using the warm water because we don't want to halt the digestive system. That will kickstart the metabolism. It will boost the alkalinity. Um, it will boost your body's ability to fight um, diseases because it will also boost the immune system. Uh, and then lemon is an essential uh, as a culinary aspect. So I'm speaking more from like the nutrition aspect, but if you look at it from a culinary perspective, I mean, you can pretty much put lemon in every dish because it adds that sour element, which gives us a flavor balance. I could talk about flavor balancing for hours too, but if we have sweet, and a bit of salt, and maybe even a little bit of bitter that comes naturally. And um, we have the sour element that comes in and it basically enhances the entire dish. And so when we eat it, our, we're like, this is amazing. You would never think, oh, there's lemon in here, but that lemon just takes it to another level. Like if you had a um, some sort of dessert, like a, a sweet, creamy, I don't know, like cashew cheesecake, and you put lemon in it, it will intensify the fatty flavor. It will intensify the creaminess. It will balance out the sweetness. Um, and also lemon and all citric acid. So it could be uh, grapefruit, could be oranges. Um, those are um, going to be really, really good for the liver. So it will help support the liver. And um, yeah, it's just a general amazing food lemon. And when you add the citric acid to any dark leafy green, like spinach, kale, uh, Swiss chard, beet, beet uh, leaves, it actually enhances our body's ability to absorb the calcium and the iron from the leafy greens. So if you're going to eat leafy greens ever, again, add lemon and you'll be absorbing the calcium and the iron even more. Awesome. Thank you. And as we are reaching the time that we are reaching, we're going to go to the Q&A section. Okay with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, we have a couple of good questions here. So from this point on, you are going to be hearing my voice. You won't see me, but I'm going to be right here, okay? Okay. So we are going to be uh, starting with the following question. When eating beans, and this is something actually that you already talked about, I tend to get bloaty. What is the proper way to cook beans to prevent it? 
Awesome. Yes. Great question. Um, that is the nature of beans because they're a protein uh, and they're really a sort of a hard protein. It, our body, it takes so much energy. So if there's any weakness at all in digestion, which, you know, many of us do, I, I do as well. I have a, I had issues in the past, but I've able, been able to heal them. So taking your beans, one great tip is to cook them. Well, first of all, you want to soak them right? You definitely want to soak them overnight. And this is the tip. Soak them with kombu, which is a seaweed. If you soak your beans with seaweed and then cook your beans with seaweed, it breaks down the cell wall of the bean and it's so much easier to digest. Um, and then the next tip would be to add some of those, um, those digestive spices. Cumin is my favorite spice. Cumin and black beans are amazing together. Uh, you know, like with a sofrito, like a little bit of, um, onion and some tomato, cumin, um, amazing. Yeah. And even a dash of cinnamon, actually cinnamon and cumin go really well together, even in a savory dish, just a little bit. You can hardly taste it, but it's going to help the digestion. Thank you. Next question. What is the best and the healthiest way to sweeten food? Yes, that's also a very good question. Um, because, you know, too much sugar is going to cause um, all kinds of problems. Um, actually, you know, in all the research that I've done, they say about 80% of disease and illness is rooted in sugar. Uh, when you start to eliminate sugar from your diet, especially refined sugars, so I'm talking about white sugar, um, even brown sugar, things like that. When you eliminate those from the diet, you're going to give your body a better chance at fighting disease. Um, what are the most healthiest sweeteners? Well, whole food sweeteners. So things like dried fruits, dates, of course, are used a lot, but I've used raisins in the past in a smoothie instead of dates or, you know, uh, sometimes I use maple syrup in my cooking. Now I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the healthiest, but at least maple syrup, it comes from a natural source uh, and it's very high in minerals, but you know, being a liquid sweetener, it's high in the glycemic index. So you want to kind of Depends on where your health's at. If you're a healthy person, you know, some, some maple syrup, coconut nectar is an excellent sweetener. It comes from the sap of a coconut tree. It doesn't harm the coconut. It's very sustainable, especially considering how many coconuts there are in the world. And um, it's a lower glycemic and it has a little tinge of sourness too, which is kind of special. But it's a liquid sweetener. So, you know, if you have any issues with, with your sugar, with your insulin, or um, any, like, pre-diabetic condition, I would stick to only whole food sweeteners um, and even minimal at that. And then, of course, just fruit. Natural fruits are um, – natural fruits are going to be good for you. So bananas, apples, apricots, uh, grapes, all kinds of things. And then as far as liquid sweetener um, – maple syrup, uh, coconut nectar, and even honey. Now, honey is a totally different topic because I believe honey, as long as uh, you're getting it from a small-scale apiary that is getting it directly from the farmer who cares about the bees, who doesn't take all the honey from the bees, I think honey is a good thing. It's uh, a whole food. It's very medicinal. It's antibacterial, antibiotic, antimicrobial. You can literally put honey on a wound, and as you put honey on your wound, you get uh, – it can – keep it, you know, safe from all the disease and things. So, um, this is really amazing sweetener, honey. Um, but if you are 100% vegan, you know, people usually don't eat honey if they're 100% vegan. Um, I eat honey as a health food and I always make sure to get it from small scale apiaries, not the big commercial farmers because they do it the opposite. They take all the honey from the bees, they feed the bees sugar, water, or high fructose corn syrup. And if they die, well, they don't really care. So small scale apiary, for honey, and then whole food sweeteners if you're going to sweeten food. Thank you so much. That's definitely very valuable. The next question that we have is, what can you recommend when wanting to quit coffee good for question. a good source of energy? Okay, great. So first of all, I don't think coffee is actually that bad for us um, if we have a very small amount of it. So meaning, you know, maybe we have one cup a day or we have it on the weekends. I think that's totally fine. Um, but if you want to eliminate coffee and caffeine specifically from the diet, uh, there are lots of different um, foods that can – or sort of drinks that can give you that energy. So um, 
I've done cacao smoothies or lattes, so using chocolate. So chocolate has a very minimal source of caffeine, but it has tons of magnesium. And it's actually a superfood. It has so many different minerals and vitamins. And it will give you energy, but there won't be much of a crash. Um, Yerba mate, similar. Uh, It has a a source called matine. It's not necessarily caffeine. Um, Green tea does have a lot of caffeine. Um, I don't drink green tea very often, although I think it's very high antioxidant value. So, and then there's, um, a food called maca, which is a superfood. And, you know, I could, again, I could talk about for hours about superfoods and sort of way in which you can find them and sustainably source them, uh, on a low income, as well as, um, really making, being cautious of where that superfood came from. So that's a whole other topic, but maca, uh, will also give you a lot of energy and it will build the adrenal glands. So it's going to build your, um, your ability to deal with that fight or flight. Uh, the cortisol build up in the body. If you have a high stress lifestyle, maca can help M A C A not to be confused with matcha, which is green tea, matcha powder. Uh, Maca is a root vegetable, grows in Peru, in the highest region of Peru, uh, grows at the highest altitude, and it's really good for people who put their bodies through the extremes. So that could be physical stress, emotional stress. Um, But again, look at where you're getting your source from um, because I think they're growing GMO maca now. So we just have to be really careful. I was talking with a friend the other day and, you know, we basically said there's something wrong with everything. There's something wrong with bananas. There's something wrong with everything. So education is key, you know, looking at where you're getting the sources um, and trying, you know, getting, getting the regulating effect. A lot of times when people are really tired in the morning, it's because their adrenals are off. Um, cortisol, which is supposed to be high in the morning, like your get up and go, um, should allow you to wake up and be energized without the need for caffeine. Um, but in our busy lifestyles, we've kind of switched that and our cortisol is low in the morning and it's high at night. So then we're, we're like high strong at night. We can't sleep because we're like wired. So it's the opposite. And that has a lot to do with sleep patterns too. So I think like looking at your sleep patterns, um, don't be too hard on yourself for having a bit of coffee, but what are you putting in the coffee? Are you putting sugar and milk as well? Dairy. Um, that's another thing to look at. Um, um, mate, chocolate, maca, as far as natural energy sources. Now the best, the best natural energy source I'm going to tell you that has nothing to do with caffeine is marine phytoplankton. Yes, a seaweed. Now this seaweed is incredible because it basically, um, every 100% of this, this, uh, small, tiny little microorganism, this, this plant, it is absorbed by the body. And there's no energy conversion needed. So every other food that you eat, even the coffee, even the chocolate that you drink, uh, your body's going to need to convert that into energy. Well, marine phytoplankton, you can buy it dried. You can buy it in in, um, like little uh, dropper form in a little container with a dropper. Uh, That stuff is instant energy. And so I usually take that traveling with me with lime or lemon essential oil. And then I mix a little bit of that in water with lime essential oil. And it's a literal instant boost of energy. So that's really what I recommend is the marine phytoplankton. You can find that online or on my website as well. That sounds super interesting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The next question, Danielle, uh, it's about olive oil. Is it supposed to be eaten uh, cooked or or raw? Yeah, good question. Um, Well, you're wanting to find your olive oil uh, cold pressed an extra virgin. So there's sort of a, a way in which they do olive oil. The first, first, first pressing from those olives is called cold pressed extra virgin. Then after that, it's just extra virgin, which means they add a little bit of heat. Same, same olives. Okay. They press it once cold pressed extra virgin. They press it again with a little bit of heat and it's called extra virgin. They press it again and it's just called virgin. They press it again and it's just called olive oil. So you want to get the cold pressed olive oil. Um, now a lot of added oil in the diet is not that healthy for you. So I highly recommend don't cook olive oil, definitely only have it raw and it's, um, you know, less than 5% of the diet. So fats, you know, you don't want to add a lot of extra oil, but for flavor, try getting, um, the cold pressed oil and I definitely recommend it raw. Yeah. Coconut oil would be the one you'd want to cook with. It has a higher smoke point, um, and it can withstand the heat, uh, better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danielle. 
And with this question, we have reached the end of our conference today. We want okay. to thank you on behalf of the Mindalia TV team and on behalf of our audience for sharing with us your time, your wisdom. Before leaving, we want to ask you, where can we find you? Where can our audience find you? Well, you can find me at pachavega.com, P-A-C-H-A-V-E-G-A. -A -A. Uh, same handle for my Instagram, uh, as well as uh, Facebook. And you can find me at Raw Vegan Chef on Facebook. Um, yeah, I'm happy to, you know, call me. Let's chat about nutrition. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, well, a couple of words for our audience before we leave. Nice you know, advice from your heart. Yeah, this is it. You know, we're all on a path. We are all on a path. Uh, our diet, our lifestyle, whatever that is. Don't be hard on yourself because you are where you are. And from today moving forward, you can make a new choice. You can create the life that you want. And I highly recommend and believe it's the small permanent changes that are going to make all the difference. It's not going 100% crazy in one direction because we're human beings and, you know, you know, I know we like to rebel. We don't like to follow the rules. So if you make small permanent changes, those are going to be the things that really change your life and make a difference. And be easy on yourself. Love yourself. Thank you again, Danielle. To our audience, thank you again for being with us today. We remind you before leaving, subscribe to our channel, like this video, leave us a positive comment down below. This is a great way in which you help us reach as many people in this planet as possible. That is our only mission. We are a nonprofit organization. We are here to share information that can help raise a level of consciousness in the planet. Also, Mindalia TV in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. You are more than welcome to visit us in our different platforms. Thank you again for being with us today. And until next time, bye. Bye. Bye.